Every anime trope explained in 10 minutes. Yelling? Okay, yelling... Like Bakugo, I fucking hate. So it's with certain characters, when they have that angry yelling trope, I really hate it. Alright? So yelling, I would definitely say that. Training arc, I don't mind. You know, I complain with like Marvel movies, or even Star Wars movies nowadays, where there are no training arcs, and they just become overpowered. At least training arcs are believable. Are there too many sometimes in certain animes? Yeah, but I don't mind it. Mo? I don't know what the fuck Mo is. Um, Sundari? I don't know what that is either. Um, I think I, I feel like I should. I forgot what it is. What's Sun Sundare? 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 What the fuck does it mean again? Fan service? Wait, isn't fan, fan service is down there already? Oh, it's Moe? Oh, Moe. Moe. Oh, Noel is Sundare. Oh, I don't mind that. It's whatever. Confession? Confession could be a little corny, but I don't mind it. Filler? Filler I just skip, so it's not like I need to look at it. You know, I just skip the filler. OPMC? That's just something you have to deal with. There's OPMCs in every fucking story you watch. Most of the stories. Truckoon? Truckoon is goaded. No dad? Um, <laughs> I just find that funny. That these kids are so fucking powerful without their fathers. What does that tell you? Yaoi, ya, yaoi moment. What is this? Just gay? I, I get. I haven't seen anything gay yet. Friendship. Friendship is funny. Friendship is fine. Fan service. Everybody complains about, but I don't fucking mind it at all. I don't even mind it in Fire Force. Give me more of it. Time skip. Time skip is fine. I actually like time skips. Flashback. Um, it depends. Like if it's One Piece flashbacks, I get a little fucking annoyed. Um, Naruto sometimes too. Slapstick? Yeah, slapstick could be annoying. Like, the girl, the girl sitting there like this. And, and then the guy looks at her. She's like, what are you looking at? Ah! You know what I mean? Like, shut the fuck up, bro. That, that, I think slapstick is most annoying, bro. That's really annoying. Yeah, my get. But, uh, alright, let's do this. Let's, let, let's start this video. Yelling out a special attack is something that we all did on the playground in elementary school, but it's also a pretty common trope in anime. It's usually found in Battle Shonen where characters have unique yep. or special powers to fight each other with, and it's a very common trope in manga. I don't mind it. When authors need to show off a power, Unless it it's has Bakugo. more impact on the page when the character says their Bakugo's attack. Bakugo's fucking annoying. getting translated through to anime when an adaptation so far. actually happens. And as cheesy as it can be, there is a legit- I don't know if Hunter Hunter has a character like that, does it? A yelling character? I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't say it's Gone. He just yells at his attack. But I mean, like a yeller, like a real yeller. Reason for it. In a lot Not of martial gone. arts, you're taught gone. to yell or exhale while doing a move to fully That's realize That's fine. I'm fine with the destroy. name. There's also the That's Japanese cool idea me. of Kotodama, I think it's which cool. refers to the Japanese belief that mystical powers dwell in words and names. I didn't this even know that. That's awesome. Japanese martial arts, like Aikido, which could explain why anime. Asta. Oh my God. Asta in like the first 18 episodes was unbearable. Make characters shout while it's ah, Noel. Like, oh my god, I wanted to fucking shoot myself. Attacking. A training arc in an anime refers to I a don't story mind this arc either. Usually for a big fight, I'm fine with the training main character arc. and sometimes their group train to become stronger. This usually happens in Battle Shonen and can often lead to major awakenings in the main character. This trope goes beyond the genre though. DBZ has some great training arcs, but so does Haikyuu. However, oh training yeah, arcs are generally reserved for Haikyuu does where the for main sure. Character are really underleveled or need to get more powerful for a specific reason. They also can vary wildly in how long they last. Sometimes they're just a single episode, and sometimes they'll last an entire season. It really oh my god, Let, yeah. Yeah, like I'm worried about the Hashira training arc. I'm like, how bless you, beautiful. I'm like, how are we gonna make a training arc of Demon Slayer like eventful? I don't know. They'll find a way. I'm sure of it. But it's like, damn man, I just want to see what's after the Hashira training arc. Really depends on the show. Moe is a slang Japanese term, and it's used in a lot of contexts, so it's hard to authoritatively define. But Japanese people generally agree that Moe as a word refers to feelings of strong effect. Feelings of strong affection for a character? Action ...towards a specific character in anime. The word is technically derived from the Japanese verb moiru, meaning to sprout. I think this refers to a viewer's experience of sprouting affection for that character. Usually, moi is recognized in the anime community as, well, just cute girls. But don't misunderstand. It's not necessarily sexual. Oh, the characters I want to fucking murder. In nature. You know, while Moe as a term used to be everywhere on the internet back in the 2020s with... How does any of that look sexual? I mean, like, 
Do they all have to wear super short ass fucking skirts like this and looking at us like that? No. But sexual? Come on. Intense, That's a little weird. Anime like Lucky Star and Kon popularizing that trend. It has definitely. Ochako is a moe. All right. Yeah. I mean, I like Ochako. Ochako's cute to me. I like her. Boss popularity recently. Sundres are a trope for an anime character that's initially cold, but eventually warms up and shows their soft side. Oh, I fucking hate these characters. One of the first guys. Who, who would be an example of this? Sundres, who defined the character trope, would be Lum from Urusei Yatsura. So this trope is actually 40 Hello, years Lum. old at this point. Sundres used to be about character progression, but sometimes in modern Sundres are just in a random state between absolutely loving the protagonist or hating them outright. Now the Sakura. Oh, you're right, Sakura. Oh, Noel too. Noel was a bitch in the beginning, but she definitely softened up. But I also hated the Noel and Asta relationship, like the the um hiding her true feelings to him and I hate that shit, bro. And I'm starting to see that with Deku and Ochako. Like I'm like I fucking hate that so much, man. The actual translation of Sundere can be broken down into two main words. Sun meaning aloof or off putting and uh, dare meaning infatuation. And hey, while we're here, I might as well okay. explain the other popular dare types. Yandere uses the Japanese word Yamu, which means to be sick and dare. So basically this is someone who is sick for your love. And they are characterized by extreme actions, resorting to violence to get the relationship if they want but eh. i can fix her right kudere uses the english word cool but it's in roman what would palm from hunter hunter be would she be this i think so right like she's like the perfect depiction of what this is a yandere yeah, yeah. So it turns into cool. All right. I, swear I have an idea this. of okay, it now. This is the legit definition. Kudere's are people that normally seem emotionless, but will show their feelings around the person they like. They're I like Kudere's. I don't mind them. someone who doesn't hide their romantic feelings at all. So they generally come off as sweet and flirtation. Oh, like, uh, what's it called? Um, 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 the new character in My Hero, the fucking lunatic bitch. Forgot her name. Dandre. Wil Wilmer? I don't know. I forgot her name. Contracts the word Danmari, meaning silence, and refers to a character that is normally silent or quiet, but... Fucking hate these characters. Oh, wait, no, I love Hanada. I'm sorry. Yeah, Toga. Um, um, a silent character. What, like Nina from Code Geass? Oh, my God. I wanted to empty a shotgun load on her. Become more talkative around their love interest. Now, there are technically more... Would she be one, Nina? Around, that could Adandere? be its own video. The confession trope refers to a moment in most romantic anime where one of the characters confesses to another. Now, in America, we don't really say, I love you, and it's normal to date for several months before you really say it. But nah, bro, it took me actually, like... I'm gonna be honest with y'all. It took me like a day to say it to live. Yeah, I'm one of those guys. <laughs> I've never done that with anybody else, bro. I've been with some people that I've never said it. I said it on the first day to live. From what I understand, Japan is pretty culturally different. It's actually normal to confess your love pretty early on, sometimes in front of the entire school. In fact, this has an entire word in Japanese dedicated to it, specifically kokuhaku, which literally just translates to confession. I don't mind confession. I wish there were more confessions in anime. Confession scenes are usually great and end up being the climax of whatever romance anime they're in, but sometimes that confession can- I just want him to start singing the song. Oh God. And then a fucking meteor hits my room. It'd be so climatic. I'd love it. Fail. Either this happens because a character rejects the other character or- Okay, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, Subaru sometimes can be a little fucking cheesy. Confessing it to uh, Emilia. I love you, don't you hear me? I love you. I do this for you. I fucking kill myself for you. I jerk off to you. Like, all right. <laughs> Even worse, I get the it. character mishears I get confession, it. causing a misunderstanding. Now, this is another common trope. I come for you. It's one of my least favorites. Filler arcs refer to a story nah, arc in an anime that arcs. isn't directly Why are you show not One Piece, plot. huh? Now, this can be confusing for a lot of people who don't watch anime, bum, bum, but bum, this bum. usually happens because while the anime is airing, Subaru never said that. I don't know what ReZero you're watching, bro. He said that. He says it every episode. The manga that it's being adapted from doesn't have enough chapters to keep going, so I'm they have to fill the this. screen time with something unrelated. <laughs> this used to oh, be I gotta watch that episode. The, day when the filler the episode of Gintama. On a basis for years. Sometimes the ending to a story wouldn't be finished, so the animation studio would have to make their own ending. This happened with the original. Bro, Boruto itself is a filler show. Like, I never heard of filler shows until I saw Boruto's filler list. 2003 Full Metal Alchemist. And in any case, most people view filler as negative, as a lot of the times they have nothing to do with the plot. But it's worth noting that there are- At least warn people when a filler is coming, you know what I mean? 
It's kind of like solo leveling didn't even warn us that we're going to get a fucking recap episode, like a 0.5 episode a week later. And then the episode came out and we're like, what the fuck is this, bro? It's a recap episode. Like, at least warn people about it. You know what I mean? Interesting filler arcs. So they don't get their hopes up. It just depends on the show and the specific arc. The overpowered main character is a common trope that is- Who's the most OP character? Now, I'm not talking about characters that are supposed to be OP, like Saitama, Mob. Like, I'm talking about characters that, that are just too fucking overpowered, bro. Um, I don't even know. I mean, I feel like Jin Woo is supposed to be overpowered. Like, that's just the premise. That's the idea of the show. Goku. Damn. Yeah, I see Jin Woo. I see emerged. Goku. Mainly due I see Ryan Hart. Ryan Hart. Wow. Two power fantasy. Go, go, Instead of the regular shonen progression of a character where they get stronger and stronger after more battles, these main characters start off in this. I fucking hate it sometimes, bro. I hate it. When they are terrible at the beginning, they have no talent, but somehow at the end, they are the strongest person in the galax g galaxy. Galaxy. Story insanely strong, not really having to break a sweat for most battles. Sora online. Isn't Goku supposed to be super powerful? Like, why even say Goku? Like, I feel like that's, he, isn't he like, like, come on. Like, I think of Goku, I think of somebody that's super powerful. It's like saying Superman's too OP. Like, it's fucking Superman. Of course he's overpowered. I think he has the right amount of power, actually. I wouldn't say over. Mine arguably made this trope Goku as popular hard. as it is today. Exactly. That's the reason we see it in a lot of isekai. Usually these characters will have black hair because they're supposed to be blank slates for Japanese high school students who can- Damn, Naruto just- um, rewrote that and insert themselves and into Ichigo. the main character. It is worth noting that sometimes huh. overpowered main characters now, Luffy, still go through a progression arc, but oftentimes it ends up in the same exact scenario. They're gonna be over. Yeah, like okay, I could suspend my disbelief. I mean, I could suspend my disbelief for every fucking anime, but especially solo leveling, because I know what it is. Now that I know what it is, I'm like, okay, this guy is gonna go from a little fucking wimp sitting in the back of the class to this popular ass super Chad that could destroy the whole. School with a flick of his finger like i understand that that's the kind of show i'm watching you know what i mean like i i once i understood that i'm like okay whatever powered against everybody he's supposed else. to be okay personally i'm not a huge fan of the overpowered main character because it removes the tension from fights but a huge amount of people really enjoy seeing someone just coast through the story which i think provides a form of escapism for it's not even just anime bro it's storytelling from the beginning of fucking time like even before i watched anime when i was a kid watching cartoons you know, everybody's overpowered. Some people. Truck-kun is a trope where I the main truck character I gets hit see more by a moving truck. Now, if I've you don't watch anime, you might think that's a weirdly specific, but trust me, it is very, very common. Usually this Moshiku. happens in Isekai Tensei, which translates to reincarnation to another world. For someone to get reincarnated, they obviously need to die. And since most Isekai just copy Moshiku. what someone else already did, they end up using the truck to kill off I love the main truck character. It's such a- I wish truck -kun would kill more characters. I wish a group of truck coons, plane coon, train coon, uh, um, um, nuke coon, I wish all of them would drop or just crash right into Mineta's stupid fucking little face. Common trope that Konosuba, the parody isekai, made a joke about a slow moving truck killing the main character just from shock. But personally, I don't think it's any laughing matter. To this day, truck coon probably has the highest kill count in anime. Truly devastating KDA, if you ask. God damn! Yeah, yeah, he carries for sure. Me. Anime characters not having dads no dad. is another common trope. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. No dad. I mean, they have dads, but they just don't have a dad present. Luffy, he's fatherless, but we know who his father is. Gone fatherless throughout the show, but we know he has a father. Naruto, I don't even know he has a fucking mother, bro. I don't even know. Maybe he's the chosen one, like Anakin Skywalker. He doesn't even have parents. I mean, Anakin did have a parent. But maybe he just lacks both of them. Um, Ichigo has a dad. Holy shit, Ichigo has a dad. Um, who else has a dad? Asta. Who the fuck is Asta's parent? Asta doesn't have a dad. We know who his mom is. Um, Goku. I forgot. About, I don't even know much about Goku, so I wouldn't even know. Um, what? I saw her earlier. Who? Anakin had a mother. Yes, yeah, Shmi. You're right. Didn't have a father, though. Because he's the chosen one. Jin Woo doesn't have a father. Um, Deku, no fucking father. What, what, what a surprise. Um, who else? Rudy? Rudy has a father. He has two fathers. One of them is the Chad Paul. Um, who else? Anya, no father. I mean, he has, she has a daddy now. Ash, no fucking father, bro. It's still a secret. Who is Ash's father? Who's Luffy's father? Dragon. We met him already. I'm up to that part. I'm on fucking Thriller Bark. 
and sometimes they just don't have any parents at all. This usually happens in Shonen series, where we see their mom sometimes taking care of them, but there's no- <laughs> Nicholas, no father. No dad in sight. Usually there's not even an explanation to where the dad went, so I'm guessing yeah, they're all in the- sometimes we have no fucking clue, they don't even mention it, as if not having a father is normal. Like, fathers do not exist in this world. You see Kilua, he has a dad. Oh no, we know about Gones. Leorio, does he have parents? He looks like a parent longest line to get some milk and cigs. Realistically, this is probably just a plot convenience so that the main character has more freedom in the story to go on it. Does Ahsoka have a family? Adventures. I don't really know when this trend exactly started, but even back in 1998, Togashi was writing Hunter Hunter, where the plot point for Gone was just to find his, his dad. dad. So just yeah, been going on for a the Yaoi Sayonata. is a trope that involves two male characters getting Ah, here we go, guys. Oh, we all love it. We all love our Yaoi moments. Oh, yeah, we love kissing the boys, bro. This is what me and the boys did back in the day. Getting really intimate with each other out of the blue. Outside of boys love anime, this is usually played off as a gag. I fucking hate. Yeah, what a great shot to pause on. You know what I fucking hate? Fan fandoms that ship two boys that are in a music group together. For example, I used to talk to somebody that would make like these stories. I forgot what they're called. Like fan fiction, I guess. Of yeah, guys, I pause on this. You're gonna have to keep looking at it. Try to keep your 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 your, your thing your ding and dingling in the pants, okay? Um, yeah, she used to like write um fan sh stories of BTS members doing each other. Oh my god, she got the block. Aga not taken seriously Disgusting. by other characters, Disgusting. and it usually ends up with both male characters getting him. They're brothers. Mad. You'll generally see this trope. In That's why I said disgusting. I'm not talking about gay people. Are disgusting. Like they're fuck. They're like brothers. It's weird. Lighthearted romance. They're best friends. Anime and obviously like imagine y'all wrote a fan fiction of me and my best friend, like Eric. Weird, bro. That's fucking weird. The BL anime, oftentimes the yaoi moment is about teasing a yaoi, specific yaoi, female yaoi, audience yaoi. named Fujoshi, which literally translates to rotten girl. Sometimes an anime will have yaoi moments or subtext at the show without committing to their full relationships, which I personally hate. Wow! Like, I'm doing this shit with Ichigo my homies, getting the characters lips. gay at that point. Come on. But I suspect that this is because is this gay Ichigo and are still pretty taboo across the world, and especially same-sex marriage should be legalized. Should not be legalized. Holy shit. In Japan. It's also worth noting that the opposite of a yaoi moment would be a yuri moment, where two female characters get in. Oh, but this is fine, right, guys? You don't mind if I pause here? Admit out of nowhere, although this is a lot less common. The power of friendship trope is the idea that the main character's friendships is what propels them to victory. Usually this happens when the main character fails to defeat a big villain until he realizes that he I has I love friends. friendship. Sometimes it's more about teamwork. Especially this friendship. All the characters getting together and working to fight the main boss. Other times, the main character literally just gets a stat boost from realizing he has friends. Kind of wish it worked that way in real life. I haven't really noticed friendship that bad. You know, it's fine. It's been fine. My favorite friendship is Hunter Hunter. That friendship, like Gon and Kilua, bro, that's like my favorite friendship in, in fiction. You know what? No, in nonfiction. Usually this trope is found in shonen anime, but you can also find it in a lot of different shows, namely sports. Fans? No, in fiction. No, no, nonfiction. Hunter Hunter's real. Service is a trope in. I don't give a fuck what you say, bro. Y'all are weird. No, no, no. I understand. I understand a fan service could be too much sometimes, okay? All right? I understand. Like, sometimes it's ridiculous. Like, I've seen modern clips of One Piece, and I'm like, what in God's name was that? There's, like, a, a scene that I was watching on Twitter. It was going around. I watched, like, 15 seconds of it without the audio on, and it was, like, Nami playing volleyball or ball on the boat or something, and you saw everything, like, jiggling and shit, and, and Robin's jiggling, and everybody's jiggling. I'm like, what the fuck did I just watch? Y'all probably know what I'm talking about. Like, that was too much. Anime where a character is usually in a sexually appealing oh, it's or a movie? position. Oh, Basically, it's a movie, all right. servicing us fans watching the show. It's also worth noting that fans- I don't mind it, bro. I really don't mind it. Like, my hero has it. Pff, fucking Fire Force. Oh, my God. Fire Force is like super haram. Uh, service doesn't always have to be for men. It can also target women as well. Usually this happens for in the edgy men. shows. Where Naked the Goku the is for the men, not the women. And back in the 2020s, panty shots used to be the go-to fan service shot. And it used to be a much more prevalent it's still the go-to shot. Practically in every show you could find a moment of fan service. But recently it's definitely died down as anime reaches a much broader audience. The time skip trope... I love time skips. 
refers to a point Say in the story you want, but I where love it. many months or years pass for the characters that the audience never sees, or sometimes will see with flashbacks. Usually this ends up with the characters looking pretty different and can be a turning point. I like it, man. Make them change. I hate when the fucking character looks the same throughout the whole show. Look at Ash. I hate that shit, bro. Change your dirty ass shirt and your dirty ass underwear already. God damn. Y'all remember when you kept the same shirt on and the same haircut for 10 fucking years? Like, come on already, bro. Change it up. I look different every four months. Do I look the same from when I started anime reactions? No. I had a mullet. I was skinnier. I, I wore different clothes. Like, I look different. For some stories. An example of a big time skip would be the original Naruto to Naruto Shippuden, which basically just marks. Wait, I don't want to get spoiled with Shippuden characters. I don't know what all of them look like yet. I'm Two happy about that. Different series I think the next characters. episode, I'm Another finally meeting Hanada in present actually day. actually happens in the middle of finally. its 27 episodes in the first season. Personally, time skip. Shit. These are one of my favorite tropes, as they usually shake up the story. Jin Woo. <laughs> Do you like Asta? That's. Okay, Asta. Whatever the fuck they did to his neck, bro, I did not approve of that. Story, making it fresh and more That's mature. where I'm like, what the fuck did they do? one of anime's most iconic tropes. Or a flashback oh, here we go. This to music. something that was already shown or to explain what's currently happening. Usually like I said, it depends media, which anime. Look down on flashbacks, Naruto and One Piece, I fucking hate the flashbacks. Using them. Generally, flashbacks are more common in older shows, as when everything was being televised and missing an episode meant you... But I understand why they did it might miss some important character development it. with no real way of catching up. So a flashback can be used in a hype moment to either remind the viewer of the past or catch up a new viewer who's just tuning in. In modern anime, flashbacks are usually used in bigger moments to build up the dramatic stakes uh -huh. of that scene. Slapstick humor is a trope that- Fuck this. Fuck this trope. Fuck it to hell. Stay in hell and burn. Involves a person- Burn in hell. Beaten up. And since anime is, well, animated, a lot of visual gags end up being impossible in real life. This kind of joke is really common in comedy anime, but is also- How dare you look at my titties? Meanwhile, they're they're, they're like gi gi gigantic. Oh my god, gargantuan. Comment outside the genre as well. Have it all out and shit. How dare you look at them, Sasuke? Well, as a form of comedic relief. A common trope within this trope is smacking someone with a paper fan, known as a harisen, which if you think about it, is a literal slapstick, since the fan makes a ton of noise but doesn't really hurt. And that's all the tropes All of your dreams. You missed the coon? What I'm, oh, I'm, oh, I missed the Sasuke coon, you're right. I thought you said I missed something. I missed the a coon, literal slapstick, you're right. Since the fan makes a ton of noise but doesn't really hurt. And that's all the tropes I had time for. Obviously I can- Wow. Bro, you, you nailed all the fucking tropes I had a problem with.